Yo, what is up everyone? This is the Exalted One, and today I'm here to tell you about a min-max farm that I do combining Searing Gorge and the Badlands. But I'm not stopping till we're exalted, sitting up with fucking millions. I ain't halted. I'm quick to pick it up and kill him. I take what he left off and continue to grill him. Electrified, I'm turning up the wattage. I'm a stalker with a machete outside your cottage. Once you spotted and dotted, you're dropping and rotting. Me and X are just the opposite of Batman and Robin. So what's a Min Max farm? It's an idea that I got at the end of Battle for Azeroth while I was trying to farm for my Brutusaur mount and the auction house prices were winding down. Blizz had changed the auction house and I was getting stuck. So I had this idea to go back and farm lower level areas as the items in these areas were either in higher demand or were often more valuable than farming current content. Basically, the idea behind min maxing is looking at each zone and finding out what that zone offers in terms of ores, herbs, rare mobs, potential mob drops, pets, and so on. Basically, taking advantage of everything that it has to offer, and literally trying to minimize your time as well as maximizing your potential profits. I'm going to steer clear of mentioning specific gold amounts because I realize this varies from server to server and I don't have enough experience with other servers to know whether or not this is a good farm for you. Ultimately, you should look up the items I'm farming on your server and get a general idea of how much gold per hour you'll be making based on what I farm. You don't need anything in particular except a tune with mining and herbing, however using a druid with swift flight form and moonfire bound to a few easily accessible keys will overall make this faster, and you should also consider using dark moon firewater as this is going to speed up the rate at which you can gather these items. So let's get into it. I start off in the corner of Searing Gorge and hit a few of the spiders. The spiders here drop Shadow Silk probably once every 4 or 5 kills. I haven't used any data to confirm the drop rates, I'm just going off the top of my head for what feels about right. If you're using Loot Appraiser to keep track of this, Shadow Silk doesn't usually show up, so just be aware that you have to factor in that money outside of this depending on what you're planning on doing with it. Shadow Silk sells for pretty well on the server I'm on, but if it's lower than the normal price, I just buy them off the auction house and relist them along with the stack that I farmed. Searing Gorge offers us plenty of ores and herbs like Mithril, Gold, True Silver, Fire Bloom, and Sungrass. If you're looking up routes for this, you'll find the majority of the herbs are more focused in the center areas of Searing Gorge, while the other ores are mainly at the edges of the rocks. I tend to weave in and out of these areas, kind of finding a nice niche path that encompasses both. You'll find that using Dark Moon Firewater makes farming this stuff quick enough that the herbs and ores won't respawn by the time you make a full circle, and you'll either be waiting for respawns or you can do what I do and just hop over to the Badlands. Now the first thing that comes to mind from the Badlands is whelp farming. And while I do tend to take a few shots at the whelps when I'm bored, the respawn rate can be so fast that it can be a farm all on its own, and you'll get distracted. Badlands offers us pretty much the same herbs and ores as Searing Gorge, only there's the addition of Golden Samsum. Also, what most people don't talk about is the Cataclysm Rapture, or Scar, that happened here. This little pit or area is really good for dragon's teeth. And when I first started farming, this price was insanely high and had sort of mellowed out since then. But it just shows the type of variety that you can really pull from combining these zones together. I also find that in the Badlands, Gold Ore seems to spawn a little more frequently than Searing Gorge, so keep that in mind too. Both of these zones provide a consistently regular availability of rare spawns from which we can grab some green transmog BOEs. Don't expect these to sell for anything crazy. I have a sort of weird system that I use to try and push these before I just vendor the stuff that doesn't sell. It's essentially sell them at market value, sell them below market value, then sell them above vendor value, and then finally, I just vendor them. And this is all based off of how often I plan on doing this farm. As in, if I'm selling enough mithril to completely empty my inventory, I'll probably end up vendoring more of these green items more quickly. Especially if I end up getting multiple versions of them. I also don't worry about stats or things like of the quick blade because since we're max level, there's not going to be anyone buying these greens to actually level with them. This is legit purely for transmog only, and so far the loot table of these gives a pretty wide variety of items with some pretty wild prices, so definitely check before you ultimately decide to vendor. You can even possibly disenchant these, but I don't because the prices and the time spent disenchanting them aren't worth the value of the gold if you were to just straight up vendor them. 
Speaking of professions, when you're getting ready to auction off your materials, keep an eye out for the difference in price and the quantity of bars versus ores listed on the auction house. While I find that ores consistently sell better overall, I usually keep a little separate stack of bars just in case, because the prices do tend to fluctuate, and you'll want to be ready for a situation where there's not a lot of bars available and the price is higher than normal. This can give you a signal that maybe people are buying or there's a shortage, and either way it can be advantageous to list some. Now I'm not going to talk about professions here because this is purely a farming guide, but there are plenty of other options to flip your ores or your bars depending on what professions you have and what you want to do. Just to point out, a low key example, solid stone from this farm doesn't sell for much and it usually doesn't even get listed at all if it's below a certain price point, but you can do some other things with this like make sharpening stones or weight stones, and for some reason, I don't know if it's twinking or what, but people still buy these and they sell for quite a bit because nobody's making them. So if you do have professions and you want to explore some additional options that you might have available to you, open up the professions box by pressing K and selecting your profession and either type mithril ore or mithril bar in the search box or just click on the filter box and click the checkbox on have materials and you can see what's available to you. At the end of the day, don't feel bad if you end up vendoring the scraps in this farm. All of this is designed around maximizing the amount of stuff you can get from these zones to give you options or ideas for what could potentially sell and what doesn't. I plan on making a few more guides like this before Shadowlands releases, even though it may not be worth it, because I do have a plethora of content that I can pull from. But I'm going to use how well these videos do as a basis for whether or not I continue making videos like this in Shadowlands. So if you do like this content, even if it isn't applicable to the current state of the game, let me know in the comments or give the video a like and I can judge accordingly. Until next time, I'll see you later.